So social factors. Now, when we're talking about social factors with, with design, this can be a very, very broad ranging term. Now, the example I've put down here on the top right, we've got this old dude on the left, and then we've got an iPhone 13 on the right. Now, the reason I'm putting this down is because, say, with um, the designer products, we as designers, we need to be aware of how accessible are our products for certain demographics. And that's just an example of social factors weighing in there. Um, Apple, one of the things that they pride themselves on is the usability or the ease of use of their iOS software, even their Mac OS software. They, they, they will probably say that they, well, actually, no, they, they still very much say that design is the core of their business, not money, like not finances, despite what you might think, everyone has their own opinion, opinions on these companies. But Apple, they, yeah, they like to think that they consistently hold value in design at the center of what they do. So with that, they want to create a perfect user experience. And through that, they believe their products will be able to be used by such a wide range of um, people, like a huge demographic. Now, this is why Apple don't, if you look at the number of products that Apple make, you could, you could count them on two hands, like in terms of range, like their product line that they have. And I mean, I think under Steve Jobs, it was even fewer, to be honest. He really believed in doing doing a few things and doing them really well, rather than doing, say, what Samsung does, which is like they carpet bomb the market with like thousands of different products. So Apple's very much like, we'll do we'll do a few things and we're going to get them perfect. And we're going to say with the iPhone, the whole thing was they wanted to make the iPhone literally effortless to use. Like you could give it to this old guy and he would look at it, might be a little bit confusing, but he would probably fairly quickly learn how to use it. Now, this is important because I mean, you can't deny it. there's no way of resisting human evolution, especially in the in, in technology. Like technology is obviously becoming more and more advanced at an exponential rate every year. Now, this frightens a lot of people, and especially people who are, um, say, my parents' generation, who is the sort of what are called the boomer generation. Now, the because those guys they lived the majority of their lives without technology, without like the web, without mobile phones and things like that. So they had to adopt those things much later in life and when you when that gets you know when, when you start having to adopt things later on in life there's an english expression called old dogs and new tricks um or you can't teach an old dog new tricks um what this what this basically means very crudely is as you get older it's very it's much harder to learn new things and new things that are totally unfamiliar to, to your existing knowledge base so it's a it's a real problem and the result of that can mean that you end up alienating a whole group a whole demographic of society so people who, um, yeah, who might be, say, my grandparents' age, so they, they, I mean, people that were born in like the early 1900s. I don't know, you give them an iPhone now, possibly? I mean, depends, like, I don't want to generalize, but they, they would have a go. Um, some of them might pick it up, okay, but some, I, I would wager that most would find it utterly confusing and a bit scary because it's something they just can't get their head around because it's something so unfamiliar with them because they've lived most of their lives without this. Now, my generation, the kids born it with, um, I can't remember, what are we now, Gen X? I don't, know if, I don't know if that's what my generation is, but like anyway, I'm born in the 80s, right? So we're, we're an interesting one because we, we are like a generation who we were born without technology. And we grew up in our very early years, we grew up without tech. And it was sort of in around when we were like 11, 12 was when tech started, like coming I mean, up when the age of the internet really started. And I remember I got my first mobile phone when I was 13 or something like that. And it was, and it, that was in 2001. And, 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 and because it happened so much earlier for us, like my generation, we've adopted this stuff okay. Like we, we've able to assimilate it into our lives. You guys, on the other hand, you are literally born into tech like you've not you've not had to go through a transition transitional phase now this is what's interesting is that this transitioning will never stop like when you guys get to this guy's age here there will be i guarantee you new things that exist then that you will have to try and adopt and get your head around now it might be because of the way that you guys have grown up with the very fast pace of technological ev evolution and innovation that you will pick it up fairly quickly, but there's a chance that it might be something to, that's just so very different. Like we might be talking about interstellar travel or something like that. That's just like, I can't get my head around that. Like, yeah, and, and this happens with so many things, you know, like um, whether it's the fact that you can now get on a plane and fly 
halfway around the world and um you can do that within like a matter of like or under 20 hours or something like that like I, I, i'm not sure what the longest direct flight is you can do these days i think it might be new york to sydney but um if you said that to someone my my grandma's age um i mean that would that would literally be like what can't get my head around that they would probably think it's unsafe they wouldn't want to do it like yeah that you get the idea so these are the social factors we need to be aware of now other social factors are i've got a picture of Tess, tesla's um giga berlin factory down below now another social factor this is picked up in topic one um course core technical principles but um something to be aware of is as technology is developed and as it's innovated potentially that creates also more opportunities for growth and the more growth there is the more jobs there are the more other ideas span off from that so the good thing is about development is that it often ends up creating new types of jobs. Now, the jobs that are available now just didn't exist even when I was a teenager. I'm not saying all jobs, that there's a whole load of new jobs now, a whole load of new university courses that just didn't exist when I was a student. So um, these are other social things that happen as a result of innovations in design and technology. Okay, that's some uh, stuff for you guys to think about there.